was Melchizedek a pre-incarnate appearance of Christ? Melchizedek was indeed a pre-incarnate and flesh of Christ, what we call a Christophany. We have a recorded teaching, I believe it's available online, on Melchizedek. We look at what is said of him, both in the book of Genesis and in the Psalms, before looking at what is said of him twice in the epistle of the Hebrews, separate priesthood. That is, from another priesthood other than the Levitical one, but he was certainly an Old Testament apparition of Jesus, to who Abraham brought the bread and wine, prefigurative of the Passover and the Lord's Supper. Now let's go further with this a bit. There are three legitimate priesthoods recorded in Scripture. Three. There is the Levitical priesthood, of which Moses and Aaron were members. As the Messiah, however, the Lord Jesus had to be a descendant of King David. He had to be from the tribe of Judah. A king had to be a descendant of David, the regal line of David. But a priest, a high priest, had to be a descendant of Aaron. That is, the Kohen Gadol, the high priest, had to be of Aaronic descent from the tribe of Levi. A priest could not be a king, a king could not be a priest. There was a sort of Old Testament separation, as it were, of church and state in a matter of speaking. Later, King John Ericanus attempted to unite the two offices wrongly during the Hasmonean period, but the two were to be separate. Only Messiah could be both king and priest. But in Messiah, we are all kings and all priests. Only he's the Melech HaMlechim, the King of Kings, and he is the High Priest, the Kohen HaGadol. So, when we look at the genealogy of Jesus, we know even from Jewish sources, specifically Sanhedrin 25 Gimel, that it says, Miriam Bat Heli, showing us that in the thinking of the Jews of the day, or their understanding that the genealogy of Jesus according to Luke was through Mary, while Matthew's was the Leverite line through Joseph. Separate subject, only mentioned in passing. But notice John the Baptist, Yochanan Matbil, was the cousin of Jesus, first cousin, son of a high priest, yet he was related to Jesus from the tribe of Judah. Mary was a combination of Levitical descent and Davidic descent. Okay? Levitical and Davidic. Jesus had to have in his ancestry a priestly line as well as a kingly line to be both. Yet, legally, as recorded in Matthew's genealogy, the Levirate line of descent prevailed. He was of Davidic descent legally the tribe of Judah. The Aaronic high priest, we are told in Hebrews, is a type of the Messiah, our eternal high priest, who was from a different order, the order of Melchizedek, Melchizedek. Going back to Genesis, Jesus was there as a king and a priest before the Torah was even given. So, we have the order of Melchizedek. Then we have the Levitical high priest, the Kahunim, the Kohens. But then we have in the New Testament the priesthood of all believers. This is what's important about Melchizedek. What you, of course, do not have anywhere in Scripture is an ordained New Testament priesthood apart from the priesthood of all believers. The notions of holy orders and things like this held in Roman Catholic and Episcopal traditions and in the Eastern Orthodox Church are absolute bogus nonsense. They have no scriptural foundation. I once heard a Franciscan priest who had been an assistant to an American cardinal called Spellman on the Catholic Channel in America, lying through his teeth. He was just lying through his teeth. He was telling his viewers 
that this says priest, this says priest, and he was reading a word as priest from the New Testament when the Greek word was presbyter, presbyter, not priest. Priest is a different word entirely in Greek, an entirely different word. But nonetheless, this is what you have. There are three priesthoods. The order of Melchizedek, that was pre-New Testament and pre-Torah. Then you have the Levitical priesthood from Aaron, bearing in mind that Jesus was a combination in his ancestry of both Davidic and Aaronic descent for, for that reason. Thirdly, we have the priesthood of all believers. There is no other priesthood, not a Roman Catholic one. The priests have no special powers that others do not have the transubstantiator forgives sins. This is all inventions. Uh, things that were basically uh, added centuries later under the influences of paganism and corrupt Roman politics, but having no basis in, scripture, in, in scriptural Christianity. That is why they have to distort certain scriptures out of context to justify this absurd notion. There is no priesthood other than the priesthood of all believers. The priesthood of Melchizedek, however, is something different. Both the priesthood of Melchizedek and the priesthood of Aaron are now fulfilled in Christ. They are all both fulfilled in Christ, producing a new priesthood, which is the priesthood of all believers. I would refer our viewers to our teaching on Melchizedek. We go into him in considerable length from the Old Testament scriptures, the Tanakh, as well as from the Epistle to the Hebrews. Thank you for your question. My name is Jacob Prash. God bless. Blessings, dear friends. Greetings in Jesus. This is your friend Jacob Prash speaking to you at the moment from the UK. You know, so many of the questions we get in our Roku broadcast and on our Vimeo clips and on YouTube, deal with subjects that we deal with much more extensively in our books. We can't, for the sake of brevity, uh, go into the kind of depth in a TV broadcast we can actually go into in a book. But so many of the questions come from material that are expounded in the books on a much more broader scale that it's almost frustrating sometimes that we can't spend hours and hours answering the questions that, that are given to us. Obviously, practicality dictates that's not a possibility. The books are there. They're available. They're available in print through the Moriel catalog on the Moriel website, moriel.org. But in this day of Kindle and electronic books, they're also available through Amazon, and they're available through Kindle. Kindle. The three books that would be the most referred to in the questions we receive are the three latest books. The first being The Dilemma of Laodicea. The Dilemma of Laodicea is an exposition of the seven churches in Revelation, culminating with the final two churches, Philadelphia and Laodicea particularly, setting the stage for the return of Jesus. The Dilemma of Laodicea would be the first. The second would be Shadows of the Beast. Shadows of the Beast. How the coming Antichrist, how his identity will be revealed to the faithful church. The rapture will not happen. Will not happen, absolutely not happen, until the faithful church knows who the ultimate beast of Revelation is. That is the Antichrist and also the false prophet. How the identity of the coming Antichrist will be revealed to the faithful church Shadows of the Beast, the second book. And the final and latest one, Harpezo. Harpezo, what the scripture actually teaches about the rapture, the snatching away which takes place between the sixth and seventh seals in the book of Revelation. So these three books, The Blum of Laodicea, Shadows of the Beast, and Harpezo, all available on the Morio catalog, all available through Amazon, and all easily available electronically by Kendall. Thank you so much, dear friends. God bless. May Jesus be with you.